Hello everyone, welcome back to another Tomcat video. This one we're going to be reprogram the lighting control module LCM, which is right under the driver's footwell to accept HD headlights. This will be part two of a three part series. And I'm this I'm actually recording this first. Tomorrow the headlight is coming and it's currently 1037 at night and I just got home from work. And uh, yep, this is full scan and no on creative name, get that out of your head. Uh, we have it all hooked up. There's other videos on YouTube explaining how to do this, and I need to take my breath. <sighs> like speaking fast. I had some complications, but I should get it all sorted out now. Uh, this costs 50 bucks, and I've probably saved more money instead of going to a dealership, unless you have someone who works at a full dealership and can do it for like amazing price. If they can't, it can be $50, and that's probably good. I got it all hooked up and connected to the car. This, this is a two month free trial, so just get this done as fast as you can. Uh, it's found all these modules and is hooked up. And I got these all taken care of. The uh, ones for the EATC I need to replace according to the shell's, uh, shell shop manual, which I'll probably find at a junkyard. So once it's all connected, we're going to head to configuration and programming right there. And then we're going to go first, we're going to explore this before I reprogram the lighting control module. Because you can also go into these other modules, so driver door module, uh, the IC, which is the instrument cluster, which I think is somewhere right here. Yeah, I forgot. And then there's the uh, air suspension module. Uh, these ones that did not say as built are text, so you'll be able to see what it says. This one can disable the easy entry and exit. So that's the seat moving backward two inches. We can disable that to in case you want to save the motor for this. I'm going, not going to do that. And so we're going to hit stop service. Go back into configuration and programming. And then we're going to go to the next one, which is DDM. Enter. Reading blocks. Here we can set auto lock and auto unlock. These are actually, you don't have to you do this. There's actually a special combination you can do that in the Ford owner's manual to do these. But I guess you can just do it here. You can type number of tires for some reason and the spare tire configuration. So we can set a full size spare or mini spare. For this one, this is a mini spare, unfortunately. Uh, but we do not need to do anything in the DDM. So we're going to hit exit to stop that. Next one is lighting control module. Now you would expect the uh, HD headlights to be in here, but they're not. You need to go into as built, and we'll get to, to that later. Eight time running lights. This was disabled, and I enabled it. I enabled it, and I did not like it. So we're going to actually disable this. So right, no changes, do nothing. Oh, we forgot to do it. So double click this. Um, disable, check. And I recommend doing this kind of one at a time. Turn signal warning chime. I think that's for this. It click at you. I think. I'm not sure. But we're going to keep that enabled. And we're going to click right. All new. Yep. Then it'll write to the line control module. Please cycle connection off and back on. Okay. Stop. And the next one is RCM. So we're going to enter that module. Let's see what it tells us here. That's a lot of blocks. Driver belt reminder status uh, and passenger belt reminder status. So I guess we can disable that if it pops up here. So it won't remind you. I'm going to keep those enabled. I'm going to exit out of this and configuration and programming. Now the ones that are as built are hex values. They're not as easy to read. So you need to look up a spreadsheet of someone who hopefully figure that out. So for mine, for the HDD headlights, <sighs> whoops, we're going to hint into a lightning control module as built. Press enter. And then it says as built function, you know, not responsible, make sure you make backups. And this is what we got. The first one is F499 and FFFD. We are going to save all just in case. Can never be too careful with these sort of things. Even if you have the proper documentation, we're going to save these in downloads. Okay. 
it has saved. And what you want to do is uh, I'm going to be back and I'm going to tell us how to do this. Hey, welcome back. I'll post the form I found how to do this on. And just to make sure you go ahead and head the first on the third page, go a little bit down and tell you how to do this. So take this number and convert it uh, hex to binary and then find the fifth digit after that and change that zero to a one. The one stands for HID, the zero stands for halogen. Uh, and then take that binary number and convert it back to a hexadecimal. And this will now give you a new number. So I went ahead and did that already. Uh, now it is, sorry for the portal lock. Why does it keep, it's not that. FC99, so I'm gonna hit right. Might be a typo. We're gonna hit yes to write it. Off, back on. And then we're going to stop, head back to configuration and programming, and then enter the LCM once again. And it's still FC99. So after this, I'm going to install the headlights and I get back to you and see if, and I'll keep, let you know if the checksum error was just uh, something it does, the program does, or if it actually worked. But if it didn't, we can always change it back. And if that doesn't work, then we can always hey, go ahead and reset the say all built as built. The other modules as built, I'm not going to go over because that'd be pretty boring seeing the hexadecimal values. Uh, but there is a few other things this program can do. If we had the DTCs, we can see that all the DTCs stored in the each of the modules. So here's for the automatic, automatic climb control uh, one self test. Fix all then clear the codes, and then it'll tell us which ones are present, and we can look those up. The other thing this can do I was talking about is this can pull driver door codes. Where is that? Uh, this also do on-demand self-test, so this is what my scan tool can do, but this full scan can also do it. Uh, I have done these before. Let's see what we have here. We system monitor key on-demand self-test. Uh, for example, if I do the uh, instrument cluster, it'll flash all of them. They'll go all the way forward, all the way back, just to make sure everything lights up there. Recording this really wipes out my battery. <laughs> it's getting hot. But out here it is, patch pre-programming, color transmission adapter tables. Uh, I think that means that um, it'll learn as it drives, so it's almost like a new car. I'm not going to do that. I guess you do it if you reinstall a new transmission, perhaps. And also read ABS service bleeds, module resets, and read factory keyless entry code. This can pull from the driver module module, so I'm going to uh, accept this. And that's what it is. We can see the first code is five. And then the rest of them, of course, I'm not going to show you for just purposes. Uh, funny enough, by we did this without, actually, I'll just leave it at that. Oh, wait, this is how to reprogram the HID headlights or lighting control module on my 2006 Lincoln Town Co. Thanks for watching and have a good one. I'll keep you posted and see you in part three, which will be me installing them and seeing if they work. I'll be I'll be merging these videos, but this was in configuration for this thing, and we can actually also pull the odometers. I think it looks like 100, 130,000 miles. Software versions, the strategy, the calibration, and the port number for each one of the modules. And if we head down to the powertrain control module, we can see the calibration level of it. So in case you have a new one or checking a junk car, maybe you have the key. This will be a kind of a good way to tell. Them. Can arrows three in delay, excellent. That's pretty good. Air suspension, software versions. I will be pulling this part number right here to look it up on eBay, but I probably will not won't be buying one. I probably have to pull it from a, um, a junk town car because sometimes they can go for a little bit. We're down about 130,000 miles. We're going to pause the video and see how accurate that is. That is accurate to the T and it means you it tells you a decimal point.
We are at 130,000 miles, 130,065 miles. That is, um, you know, you never take back miles. I got this with 123,000. And I try my best to um, keep traveling to a minimum. Anyway, see you next time and have a good